Hello everybody everywhere! I am the Old World Gamer, and welcome back to Bastion's Black Bass for the Super Nintendo! One of the best consoles ever created! With its miraculous retro games and sexiness... I'm done. Anyways, trying to catch some more fish. Someone <laughs> said it best uh, in the last video saying that it's like real life, you never catch anything, which is very realistic to how I fish in real life. Whatever it is, when I was growing up, we, like, back, uh, here in Newfoundland, there's not a whole lot of different kind of fish in the freshwater. And when I say that, I mean, like, there's probably a, several different types of trout. Um, sometimes in some spots of the, uh, of the island here, or the province, you can find, um, salmon. Uh, I'm not sure about fishing in Labrador, so I can't really quote on that. This is just Newfoundland. But, um, it's mostly just trout. You can catch eels, rarely. I don't know why, but I've caught several eel eels, and always using a bamboo pole. And yes, that is an old-fashioned thing that we do here as well. You can still get bamboo poles, which... Some people actually have a preference to use the bamboo poles over normal rods, which... Is good and bad. What's good about it is that, you know, they're, they're easy to... Uh, well, not really. They're not really easy to take around. Most people have to roll down their back window and put the goddamn thing through... Hanging it through the car or whatever, but... The one thing that I hated most about bamboo um, fishing poles is that um, they're not retractable and they're, they're not short. They're very, very long. And what usually ends up happening, or at least what has happened to me several times, actually, no, I've caught three eels on bamboo. Because this is what happened for another one. Oh, ooh, what did we get? 5.6, okay, that's not too bad. Uh, it doesn't look like we're keeping it though, so it's only a small one compared to the ones that we already have. Anyways, um, I was fishing, uh, in a pond, uh, one time, and, um, I had thought I had caught something big. I didn't know it was an eel at the time, so what did I do? <laughs> I went and pulled it as hard as I could, and when I did, oh yeah, I'm kicking ass. Ten pounds more than Stacy Handy and Sherry Martin. Wow, a lot of females on the top of the board there. That's really cool. I like that. So anyways, I thought I had something big there, so when I pulled on it, I pulled on it super hard. And what happened? The eel came out of the water and continued to soar over my head. And kept going, and kept going, and it was gone. Can't get any more fish. <sighs> so maybe we can get some by the rocks or whatever we just went over. Fishies? Are there any fishies here? But yeah, getting back to what I was saying, uh, yeah, for whatever reason, in freshwater, um, whenever we used to go trout in freshwater, um, I would rarely catch anything. I think the most fish I ever caught in a day in freshwater, I want to say a half dozen, but I keep thinking five. And I know. You're thinking like, oh, well, that's a lot though, right? It's like, no, it's not. Considering that, um, well, I guess my stepfather at the time, um, ooh, there we go, big old bastard. But yeah, considering my stepfather at the time used to go trouting on his own a lot, and he was one of those types that would try for maybe half an hour and then walk for an hour and try for half an hour and then walk for an hour and just kept going. He used to like that shit. But, um, I didn't like it so much because there's a lot of bogs in Newfoundland, and bogs can be a piss-off sometimes. But anyways, regardless, um, there's times that he has come home with, like, what, 40 and 50 trout? And this was years ago now, mind you, so I don't know if there, there's any laws against that. Then, ugh. But uh, it wasn't me. <laughs> it was him. Uh, but anyways, yeah, he's come home with, like, 40 and 50 trout in a day, and I'm just like, How? Where? Where are you catching these fish? What are you doing to catch them? And obviously, I, I'm not as good at freshwater fishing as I am in, you know, at least not in real life as I am in video games or something. But, um, 
I would like to try my hand at fishing for other fish in uh, like like pike and bass. I think that would be phenomenal. But um, I was always much better at fishing slash jigging um, in saltwater. Uh, I've, I've been able to catch tons of cod before. That's no problem whatsoever. But um, but whatever it is about freshwater fishing, I I am not good. I am not good at it. And I guess usually it's because I'm one of those people that, you know, I don't reel, I don't cast and reel in, cast and reel in. I'm a very, hey, I have a bobber, you know, float on the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast it. Once it goes down, then I'll get the fish. Mm. Anyways. Trying to catch this big bastard now and hoping that, uh... We'll get him very soon, because I would like to have his babe. Wait, that's not right. <laughs> Hello? Are you interested in anything? I have food here in the, in the form of hook and pretend worm. How can you not want to eat that? How, how can no creature in the world want to eat a hook? I mean, come on, hooks are delicious and stabby. Mmm! Delicious and stabby! Mmm! It's like a club sandwich. When you forget that they put toothpicks in the middle of it, and then you bite into it, and you're like, Ah, oh, God! Oh, it's the worst. Oh, God. If that's never happened to you, be thankful. And, and never forget that. You do not want to do that. I've had one stick into the top of my mouth one time, because I forgot about it. That was, ugh, shitty. And it didn't go in far. It was maybe in, like, one-eighth of an inch, maybe. Nah, probably not even that much. I was just like, uh, uh. And I pulled it out. I was like, yeah, that was dangerous. <laughs> Toothpicks, yeah. Gotta be careful with toothpicks. They, they can cause a lot of damage. Even small pieces. They can puncture your intestines. And I'm pretty sure they had a house episode about something similar to that. Or he swallowed like an entire toothpick. How the fuck do you swallow an entire toothpick? That's what I want to know. How, how, how do you not die immediately from trying to swallow that fucking thing? <clears throat> hmm. I will attach a new lure, a bright one, and I'll use my pork. I will jig my pork until that fish jumps into my boat and is like, Can I jig that pork for you? And I'll be like, hmm, I don't know, what kind of fish are you? Can you give me a gummer? No, because it's a fish and it has little tiny sharp rigid teeth. <laughs> it's a shark. It's a trap. Come on. Okay, crappy, fuck off. I want nothing to do with you. I'm, I'm pulling back my pork. You're not getting my pork. How dare you try to jig my pork, crappy, when I'm trying to get this large bastard of a bass to eat me. Or at least eat the lure. Okay, so let's try a natural spinnerbait. Are you going to be one of these, like, super particular fucking bass that are just like, I don't know if I like this or not. Mm. Please, just have a little taste for me. I guess he's not interested in natural spinner baits either. So, uh, does that mean I'm gonna have to like try all the different types of like natural ones again? This is the one thing I do not like about the game is when it's, well, it's not really forthcoming on what it wants, and it always switches in between like a couple of different lures from time to time. Ooh, great fish! You interested? Mmm, delicious crayfish. Some crawdads. You want some of them near crawdads? Because we going to just like shove them right in your face. <sighs> or, once again, we're going to try every fucking lure that we have in our tackle box. Because these fish are so goddamn particular. I don't know if I want this one right now. I'm kind of feeling like a natural colored minnow. Thank you very much. I don't want to have your uh, noisy bait. Most times, there's not a lot of whole, uh, not a whole lot of fish. That's what I meant to say. There's not a whole lot of fish that go for the noisy and um, uh, what's the other one called? The vibrating lure. There you go. No, I've had fish go after the the crayfish, especially the um, the catfish. I don't know what it is, but there were several times I remember growing up that I found that uh, catfish in this game were really attracted to the crayfish lure and, and I don't know maybe it was just my luck at the time or something but I don't know I think um, 
Also, I think the biggest fish that I've ever caught in this game, and again, don't quote me on it, please, is I th I want to say 29 pounds, but I'm not 100% sure, so. Gonna try the vibrating lure anyways. Everyone likes a good vibrator. At least a lot of the ladies do. Cause your penis ain't good enough cause it doesn't vibrate. Do do do. And I mean, you can stick pearls into your in, into your penis and underneath your skin and stuff. And I'm pretty sure Cubans do that. That's weird. I don't even know why I'm talking about this. But anyways, you can't make those suckers rotate. <laughs> Not without probably damaging your dick. So, uh, God. Okay, let's stop talking about that. Vibrating lure, yes, for the ladies. Just take out the hooks because they'll probably get pissed off. And yell and hurt you and make you into a lady as well or tuck your balls into your asshole no one wants to witness or feel that happening to themselves you well unless you're into that kind of thing <laughs> and where is the video devolving to i don't know but it, it, it's bad enough right now that i'm trying to catch this cocksucking fish with a fucking spinner look at a look at a fucking crappy just coming out of nowhere like oh can i have some of it can i have some please i'll have some of your spinner I'm like, no, you can't have none of my spinner. Get out of here. Get out of here. Meh. So I'm going to try the natural minnow, which is probably what he wants. Oh, natural. <sighs> so, um, not that I look at my analytics. Uh, I, I don't know. I, I would assume that some people look at them a lot. Um, recently, I, well, actually... In the whole three years that I've been using YouTube, I don't look over my analytics all that much on, you know, who's watching my videos, where they're from, yada, 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 because honestly, I don't care. As long as someone's watching my videos, I'm usually pretty happy. I don't I don't care where they're from. <laughs> doesn't matter where you're from. If you're, As long as you're watching my videos and enjoying them, who cares where you're from? But, um, or your age group for that matter. But I have noticed, excuse me. I have noticed that a lot of, um, I guess, young adults and people my own age, so like say 14 to about 35, that's my audience right there. Which, I know it's kind of big, but the biggest chunk of that audience are the 25 to 34 range. So, or 35, whatever you want to call it. But, um, so I'm, I'm pretty cool with that. I'm kind of happy that uh, people my own age are actually watching my shit. And, and are probably enjoying it, and I don't have to worry about, like, babying them or anything like that, because, I don't know. The, the Let's Play, th like, mm, I don't want to really comment too much on that. Maybe I'll just keep my mouth shut and enjoy what I'm doing. Who cares? Who cares uh, about different groups and places and things? Because, well, why? Why worry? But, uh... I'm starting to see that I'm pretty sure um, the one group that I haven't been really talking to a lot recently, although I subscribe to most of them, um, the Let's Play Sanctuary has a lot of people there, and uh, that's where a lot of the people that I enjoy watching have come from. Um, I'm not sure 100%, but that might be where I might have met Nakuso, Paul, and um, I'm pretty sure that's where I met Eliza Bar, um... What else? Uh, I, I mean, uh, there, there are several people from there that I've met, and so far they've been all pretty nice. And again, ooh, and my own age, which is again quite nice because sometimes it's nice having people your own age to talk to. Um, one thing that uh, I envy most about the, I guess, the collectors out there and the people who make the 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 bigger more important videos and stuff that people enjoy watching the most it seems uh like the game hunters and uh and pat the nes punk and all them is that they're my age and they all seem to enjoy the games and you know they don't really worry about let's playing and stuff like that although it seems like avg anim well mike especially has been uh doing a lot more of that streaming and, you know, gameplay recently, and it's probably because they want to stop, uh, you know, fooling around with having, you know, other jobs and just focus on doing, you know, what they enjoy, playing games and, you know, using that as a medium for, you know, employment. 
And uh, originally that's what... Ooh. Do not bust my lines here. Originally that's why I started uh, Patreons. Because, well, one, I didn't want to put ads in my videos anymore. And to be quite honestly, I make more on Patreon in the run of a month than I did uh, with advertising. And all I have is one member who subscribed to me. And that that's it. Only one patron. And that's fine for now. He's a really nice guy. Um, and he watches most, if not all, of my stuff. So, I mean, I, I can't really complain about that. But the, that was the reason behind uh, 8.4. Oh, that's my smallest one so far. But, yeah, that's why I've done Patreon. Or one of the reasons why I've done Patreon is that I would love the chance at being able to just do games on a more regular basis. I would like to spend eight hours a day at work, quote unquote, recording and playing and editing and, and uploading games and, and other cool videos for people to watch, but I just don't have the time. The reason why indie sources end up, I, I say I'm going to do them one weekend and then it's two weeks later before I get it done, is because stuff like work gets me tired and takes up my time. like doing timesheets and, and having to go and do these extra courses online and uh, they, they just they keep piling on a lot of responsi responsibility and work uh, when technically we probably some of it we shouldn't have they, they should be taking a little bit more responsibility as a company but it seems like they, they just want to put it on you so that way you know if, if the company we work for needs to shit on someone well they shit on the technicians and not on the company itself so yeah, that, that, that's pretty much all you can do about that, though, so. But yeah, I, I would love, obviously, and I'm sure if anybody who's ever Let's Play would say the same fucking thing, that they would like the chance to stay home and just play games all day. But, again, the thing with the whole Patreon thing, and, and what I would like to do is, you know, more than just Let's Plays. It's, it's not just Let's Plays. And, and, you know, and I wanted to do more with the patrons, and, and work with them, and you know, make new videos and such with them, so, uh, it's hard to, to, to get that thing started, and by no means am I popular, am I a big YouTuber, Let's Player, reviewer, etc., whatever you want to call me, so, I, I just like to make videos, and I would like to do it as a career, just because it would be nice. It would be much nicer to be able to make people happy through making reviews and gaming series than to... Uh, set up their internet and cable because people, if they don't get things done their way, exactly their way, or, or you know, if they can't try and using a Newfoundland word here, ski in to trying to get you more services than what they're supposed to get, like they, you show up their house and they're like, oh, I was supposed to get two TVs, and you look at the order and it's like, yeah, but you're marked for one, and for all I know, you don't have the money to have a second TV. And maybe you don't pass a credit thing, because that is a thing with even with cable and and internet and stuff like that. You st they still sometimes have to do a credit check on some people. So yeah, uh, so people try to do that, and it's just uh, it's more of a bother than anything else. But eh, whatever. Anyways, we managed to catch a few fish today, but. Nothing substantial. We did catch that 8.4 pounder, which he looked nice, but um, it would have been nice to have something bigger than that. He, he's our lowest right now, and oh, look at the bottom of the screen there, right up above the lure. See how like the graphic got fucked up? Sometimes that used to happen, and obviously it's happening right now, so I don't know why, but it almost looks like it's shorter, and now I'm getting messages of the text variety. So, oh, we got him. We got him. Come on. Hmm. I don't think this guy's going to be worth keeping, obviously, so. Pull him in. Hmm. Oh, it's a spotted bass! 4.4 pounds! Well, that was a nice little surprise. But, I'm gonna end the episode here for today, everybody. As always, thank you all for watching. Uh, hopefully you're enjoying the fishing. 
It's relaxing and fun. <laughs> and as always, I'm 70 Old World Gamer, and I'll see you all next time for more Beasts, Bests, Black Bass.